Let's look at the trends of some group one elements. Group one elements. And what we can see is that at the very top of the group one elements is lithium, followed by sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and then francium. All right? Generally, what we're going to say is that the reactivity of uh, group one elements does increase, goes up when you go down the group, all right? So it's noted by this arrow that gets very big at the bottom and small at the top. And also, generally, the melting point and boiling point of these um, group one elements decreases as you go down the group, all right? So it goes, decreases, so you have fat tail and a small uh, arrowhead, all right? So, um, that's the general trend of it. And what are some of the our properties of group one elements? Well, generally speaking, I mean, uh, group one elements have only one valence electron. So no matter how the nucleus looks like or how the inside electrons look like, this here is a schematic of uh, the valence shell, all right? So this is the outer shell. And it only has one valence electron. Now, this one valence electron gives it all these different properties that we're going to discuss later. Okay? So, what are the properties? Well, uh, group one elements, compared to all other uh, metallic elements, have relatively low melting and boiling points. It's very soft. You can easily cut through um, group one elements with a butter knife, okay? So you don't need anything that's really sharp, you can cut through it. It also has very low density compared to the other uh, metallic elements. It is highly reactive because of that one valence electron. And so because of its reactivity, it has to be stored inside oil, usually silicon oil. Or well, sometimes they put it in other organic substances. All right. Again, what I mentioned is soft. Um, these group one elements are also very reactive, and because of that, is highly it easily oxidizes. All right, and when it oxidizes, the outer uh, layer dulls very quickly. Uh, the react the highly reactive because group one elements are highly reactive. It really does spontaneously reacts with when it comes in contact with water. So uh, here's a general equation. We have uh, two moles of this, uh, two moles or two units of this uh, group one element, noted by this general symbol M, just to symbolize metal. So it's not anything in particular. It's not any symbol or elements in particular. It's just a general symbol. Reacting with two units or moles of water, and you get two moles of this metal hydroxide, or two units of this metal hydroxide, plus hydrogen gas that's released. It also reacts with halogens. Halogens are group seven. All right, so this is a general formula for halogens, and this is a general formula for uh, metals. In this case, specifically, group one metals. And uh, it forms with the halogens to, be, to make salt, all right? And next is just a general formula for a salt or metal, a metal halide. So uh, here's an example, uh, two moles or two units of sodium reacting with uh, chlorine, uh, halogen gas, to give us sodium chloride, which is table salt. All right, let's look at the uh, electron structure of lithium and cesium uh, and use this structure to kind of explain the, in terms of its reactivity. If you look at lithium, uh, it has one inside shell or electron or energy layer, and it has one that valence electrons on the outside shell. And let's look at cesium. It has a lot of inside shells. All these are its inside shells. So there's a lot of it. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five inner electron shells. All right. There's only one shell, and 
cesium has six shells because if you count it, there's one for uh, group period one, two, three, four, five, six. So cesium is on the sixth period, so that's why it has six shells. And inside here, well, not drawn accurately, okay, I'm just going to put a side note. These inner electrons are not drawn accurately uh, because this is a very simplified model as well. Uh, but what we're concerned about is that this valence electron is really, really far away from the nucleus. And it's also, this valence electron is kind of like uh, the, the, the interaction with the nucleus is kind of obstructed by all these inside electrons, all right, in the shell electrons. Whereas lithium has only these two electrons uh, obstructing the nucleus react interacting with the uh, that valence electron. Now, why do, does the reactivity increase as you go down? It's because of the inner shells in here obstructing the uh, interac interaction between the valence electron and the nucleus when you compare it with some elements that's up there in the group where this electron only has two inner electrons that obstructing its interactivity between him and the nucleus. Also, the distance between the valence electrons to the nucleus is very far and you go down the, as you go down the group. So the distance from the valence electrons to the nucleus also with all these inner shell electrons that are interfering with the interaction between the various electron and the nucleus causes elements lower in the group to be more reactive. Okay? Whereas this is the opposite case. Now, why does um, uh, group one elements have low melting point, no low density? Well, it's because of the way that the element is kind of the element is kind of structured uh, in its metallic form. So here is a very simple uh, diagram of the metallic bonding nature of uh, group one elements. So this here is what we call the uh, the nucleus, the positive nucleus that is fixed. And what we have um, in this black dot symbolizes that one valence electron. So that valence electron, again, is, is delocalized, okay? It's not fixed in this position. So this electron can go around here, here, there, 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 there. Whereas the other electrons can do the same. And all these one valence electrons will go all over the place and trying to hold the uh, nucleus in the positive nucleus in place. Now, if you compare this with other elements, let's say group two elements, group two elements, you will have two valence electrons. So what it means is that there are two more electrons for every positive nucleus. Oh, I'm running out of space to draw all this. So it has two more valence electrons for every positive nucleus. Um, and it's one extra electron compared to the group one. And when you have more electrons and also more po uh, positive nucleus, it's more positive because uh, inherently you have an extra proton and also an extra electron and you have more electrons delocalized, moving around, it kind of holds the positive nucleus more in place, right? That means the positive nucleus are less likely to get banged out of shape because the electrons, there are more electrons holding the, the, all these nucleus, positive nucleus in place because uh, some electrons here is gonna Pull, uh, get pulled by the nucleus as all, and also the opposite direction. And so there's a 
interaction between this positive nucleus and the valence electrons and the delocalized electrons of another positive nucleus, and you get something else over there and something else over there. So it all kind of makes it uh, stick and stay put with one another uh, in place. It's just kind of like if, uh, uh, let's say, you uh, hold arms with one other person, okay? So this is like one, um, you got one electron, so this fist here is your electron, and you can hold it in place with another person, all right? And, and that's all you have uh, that to hold that other person in place. But if you have two valence electrons, like two arms, you can hold those the other person in place because you hold to have two arms to hold that person in place. So that means you are less likely to get shaken off if someone shakes you. And whereas if you only have one arm holding that other person in place uh, because you have one valence electron, uh, that means uh, the likelihood if someone wants to push you away because they hammer you down, uh, you will most likely move. So there you go. Some uh, hard explanations of why we have uh, low melting points and boiling points for group one elements.